Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Timmy Kenza James. For our new subscribers, you're welcome. And our old subscribers, you're all welcome. I love you all. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to cut a straight dress with a bishop sleeve. So the emphasis is going to be on the bishop sleeve, right? And then the blouse, because I'm going to be using the side, the underboss side darts. So those are the two things I'm going to be emphasizing on. So to the fabric we are going to be using is this um, chiffon fabric. So it's the thicker chiffon, not the lighter one, right? And the client wants the dress, the client wants a fitted dress, right? And we all know chiffon is not the best fabric for a fitted dress, a figure hugging dress. It's more of a flowy fabric. So for us to give it a little bit of structure, we are going to be adding um, lining to it. Now, guys, for your own, you can add interfacing such as hair stay, right? Either the cutting one or the nylon one. But I there's, there's a way I don't want it too thick because if you're adding hair stay to this, you're going to still add um, lining. So I want to be lining the dress, but I don't want it too thick. But if you don't mind the thickness, that's okay because I'm filming from Nigeria. So the weather here is not too good for something extra thick like that. So that's the reason why I'm not going to be adding uh, uh, interfacing, right? So I just hope you get the gist. So I'm also going to be using a piece of chalk. I have this small piece here, you can see. So I'm also using a pair of scissors, a tape and my ruler and curves, right? So guys, um, I just laid my fabric, folded it in four like this. You'll be wondering why I have bobbin case here, right? You don't have to use bobbin case, but guys, these, uh, these chiffon fabrics, anything chiffon and crepe, they are fabrics that like, they don't joke with them. So you have to get these things to support. If you have um, those professional ones, those metals, just to keep your fabric in check, fine. But I don't have that. That's why I'm improvising with my bobbin case, right? So chiffon fabric is not something you joke with. Because by the time, if you don't do this, by the time you're done cutting, you discover that one side is either longer than the other or one is wider than the other. So when you keep your fabric, you make sure to do that. So now I'm going to start by cutting the skirt. The length of the, the dress generally is 42. And then from her shoulder to her affluence is um, 16 inches, right? So I'm going to be taking 16 inches out of 42. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to find 42 on my tape. Now, I will add one inch for hemming, right? So I'm marking 40, or two inches for hemming. I'm marking 44. Then I'm going to come over here, this side, and find 16 inches here. So I will mark 16 inches like this. Mind you, I'm still pressing down the fabric with my finger so that the fabric does not move. Guys, don't joke with chiffon. It's, it's, and rather, it's not joking with you either. So, I'm marking 16 inches like this. So, I'm going to be ruling that in a straight line. So, you want to press your ruler down like hard so that it will keep that fabric in check as well. Right? So, what I'm going to do here is just to mark my basic skirt block right so her waist measurement from her measurement the waist is 26 i have a skirt um a skirt tutorial the pencil skirt tutorial so i'm going to be linking it up for you to see so that we don't waste time on drafting the skirt alone so i'm inserting her waist measurement divide by four one inch for that and two inches sewing allowance then the distance from her waist to the hip i'm going to be marking it like so 
then her hip measurement I'm going to find her hip measurement divide by four I'm going to be marking that plus two inches sewing allowance because my dart is not going to be reaching my hip. Then I'm finding her knee. I'm just going to be connecting that. You can use your hip curve to do that. But right now, I'm just doing that by hand because I really want to be in control of my fabric. So, before you cut, you double check your measurements. Right? I'm going to be double checking my measurement, if there's anywhere you need to still move and adjust it, you do that. For chiffon, you really want your scissors to be as sharp as possible. This is by far one of the most tricky fabric to work with. Silks, generally, any fabric that has any kind of silk is very tricky to work with. Slide is for my zip allowance. The upper front of the the dress now, right? So to to start that now, you remember I said the dress is going to be the side bust that right. So I'm going to mark. I have. I'm supposed to use 16 inches from her shoulder to the half length, right? Then half inch for joining the upper side and the skirt side of the dress. Now, I'm going to take in two inches of that. Because it's going to be at the side, it's going to affect the length of the upper side. So I'm adding two inches, which will give me a total of 18.5. So is that 18.5 that I'm going to be marking? Now, it's not going to be the same thing for the back. So this is just applicable to the front side of our dress. So I'm going to put in weight to hold my fabric, right? Then I'm going ahead to press this down. I'm going to insert my three inches, eight inches neckline and shoulder line simultaneously. Then I'm adding, I'm putting my one inch shoulder slant. I'm pressing down my ruler, right, because of the fabric. Now I'm going to connect that. Then I'm coming down by 7 inches, which is our armhole divided by 2. Seven inches here is from the shoulder slant.
So now I'm going to insert her regular shoulder measurement. Now let me explain something about the shoulder slant, right? So if you're sewing for someone who is a standard size, if the shoulder of the person is less than 16 inches, these 8 inches is assumed that the standard body is 16 inches. If the body is less than, than 16 inches, that's on the shoulder, what you do is, whatever the difference is, you take it out going inwards on your shoulder slant. So now the, the client here, her shoulder is 14 inches. I'm dividing 14 by 2, which is 7 inches. So I have my 3 inches standard here for my neckline. Now I'm going to continue from here, from this so I'm going to continue my 7 inch, so I'm placing my 7 inch from here to this 4 here is seven is 3 inches, right? So I'll continue my measurement on the shoulder slant, then I'll mark here. So this becomes her new shoulder point, right? While the standard shoulder point is around here. So you can see we have a difference of 1 inch. Divide by 2 is 2 inches. So that's why the standard shoulder is 16, but her shoulder is 14. So this is it. But for a plus size person, which the shoulder is wider than 16 inches, what you just do is extend the shoulder slant, extend the line, right? Then you continue, you put in the difference on the extended line. That's how to go about a plus size um person right so i have seven inches here i'm marking seven inches here that's because i want to square out my line so i just changed my chalk to blue i'm going to mark from my shoulder to my bust point which is 10.5 then i'm marking to the under bust sorry to my bust point is 10 to my under bust on the to my under bust is 13 right so I'm marking the same thing on this line to my bust point 10 to my under bust 13 going to be connecting that like so so I'm going to be marking on my bust point I'm going to be marking the bust pan measurement like so now I'm inserting my bust measurement here so I'm inserting my bust measurement divide by 4 plus my sewing allowance here right on the affluence point my affluence is 26 I'm dividing 26 by four I have six point five I'm marking six point five here plus two inches sewing allowance now I'm going to connect this first point together then I connect the second point which is my sewing allowance right so on my bust point this is my bust point this is my under bust so my bust point i'm going to be marking the bust pan measurement which is 3.5 here then i'm going to be marking this is my bust point right so i want my dart to come from here to connect this point so i'm marking two inch inches for the dart right so I'm marking that two inch like that. Then I'm going to be connecting it to the bust point. Right? I'll be connecting it to the bust point. 
then I'm going to square this out on this side like this so by the time I take in my dart I'm going to pin that down so that when I take in my dart Now, I'm going to make my armhole curve. Then I'm doing my neckline, which is 3 inches, 3.5 downward. And then by 3.5, so I'm going to be connecting my neckline, right? Then I'll be cutting that. I'll look carefully how I'm going to be cutting this area. So when I get here, I'm going to cut here like this first I'll still come back to that add on the noise and the background I have sewing going on on the other side that's why we have that sound so I'm going to mark I'm going to connect here move it to this point here right then I'll cut out my line like so right so this is it about our front now I'm going to try to mark this point this is my dart point because I want to take it to the other side I'm going to pin those sides down I'm using my pin to hold to puncture this side so that I can trace my dart on this side. So this is what I have here to here, right? So I'm going to be tracing my dart so that when I'm sewing, I know where my dart is. So that is it take out my pins then I'll cut the back I've ironed it then I brought the front side and I'm placing it on the back side right that's because of the nature of this fabric I don't want to be going through the stress of drawing all these lines again now on this side you remember I told you it's going to be a standard that on the back side so I'm just going to mark one inch here for the dots for that dot. So that one inch is going to be connected to this point here, like this, right? Now, on this side, I have my zip allowance. So I just placed this on top here. So I left my zip allowance. For the last modification, you remember this is 3.5 for our neckline. I'm going up by 2.5 so that our neckline will be one inch, right? So I'm just going to curve nicely like so so this will be our neckline for the back now for this side i just folded this two inches for this dart here this dart is not going to be at the back rather the back will have the standard dart so i'll connect this side Then I make my curve. Every other thing will be just the same. Then I'm going to open here for my zip. And that will be it. So now I'm going to fold my fabric back to show you the main topic of today, which is our bishop sleeve. 
so at this point the sleeve length that we are working with here is 18 inches right so we'll mark 18 inches here i'm marking my 18 here now I'm just trying to show you the easier way of making this bishop sleeve without pattern. So I'm going to mark my 18 here as well. Right? So I'm inserting her calf's height. So I have, if you don't know what calf's height is, you check my video on standard um, sleeve pattern. I'm going to be linking that. So I have 4 inches for the calf's height. Right? So what I'm going to be doing now is almost like um, it's almost like drafting a basic sleeve first. So it's now I just folded it in half and then I made it really wide because it's going to gather here, right? So I'm going to mark the biceps measurements right so i'll find the half i'm going to find half point of this line this is the the length of the sleeve the cap of the sleeve right i have nine inches so i'm making 4.5 here right so i'm going to use my curve to connect this 4.5 to the cap side right now i'm going to connect this point instead of connecting it here i'm connecting this point to that midpoint there so it's going to be sort of a slanted line like that right now i want it to have pleats on the shoulder so so that it will be like sort of a curve just like we have on cup sleeves right so from so from this point here which is the starting point of my sleeve i'm going to be extending it by four inches so it's this extension that gives us that cup feel so i'll be connecting that extension to this midpoint that i have here in the curve right so here on the hem side of the the sleeve right normally her sleeve curve is eight inches right divide by two will be four like this but instead of using this four i'm extending it to let's say 15 right so i'm going to mark that 15 then i connect it to this point so this will be my sleeve I'm going to cut that out. So this is not like a standard way of doing this. There are other ways you can cut this same bishop sleeve, which is um, using our... That's using the... The pattern method right so in another video i'm going to be talking strictly on sleeves overall so when i bring this together you see it makes that cup feel here right so by the time i'm done i'm going to cut another sleeve which will be two right so when i do that i'll cut my lining pieces and we go over to sew meanwhile i'm going to cut a bias strip that i'm going to be using to put this side together right so that will be it